you are listening to the B shit i'm back i'm just gonna go for it go for the gusto it's episode eight zero eighty i know i'm keeping track of it like this is so foreign to me i've been so consistent that i know what like i don't have to even think about it it is the episode 80 the v cast vixen daniel here with the one the only mr mike romanelli how are you sir thank you for gracing me what's up vic thank you for having me on this this beautiful <laughs> show to v cast i'm excited thank 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 you me for having you at your place <laughs> <laughs> thank you this for having show? me yeah, you you traveled all the way here to be you didn't even have to be here today this is not i don't even have to be here what's that from i'm not even supposed to be here today oh clerks clerks. yeah Yeah, i'm not even supposed to be here (laughs) yeah that's i do feel a little like that today that's like if you if you walked in to come up here and there was a fucking issue in the kitchen and then you got involved and and that's like one of the first things you're gonna say is i'm not even supposed to be here (laughs) I, i honestly nobody even knows i'm here I, I ran through the back. Nobody saw me. I went up the side door. The kitchen could be on fire right now. I have nice. no idea. Nice. Ne- neither would I. And we'd just <laughs> die in here in the middle of the podcast. Hopefully somebody will be able to pull this recording off of this burnt, corroded laptop and get it out of my hands. I'll just flick it out the window. That way at least people will get our last gasping breaths. <laughs> <laughs> so this is episode boring. 80 Vic that's episode awesome. 80 dude um I should be at ep- you know th- this is why I wanted to come here today see the first thought when you said episode 80 my first thought was it should be episode 300 because I've been doing this mm-hmm. for fucking five years five years episode 80 wow. so I don't know what the divide is yeah but five years I've been doing this podcast I'm at episode 80 my first instead of just saying accepting the congratulations <laughs> and being proud that I've been you know like of yeah. the now mm-hmm. I'm thinking about how it was and what I've done wrong mm-hmm. so that's like the beating of the drum in my head I get it. it's been like four days now where this like wave comes and this is something i probably don't ever talk to like mm-hmm. I, I don't think i've ever talked about it in the pod. i probably like touched on it mm-hmm. a little bit but and this is something i never really talked to about with anyone yeah right which like saying that i probably should get help <laughs> 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 i probably should get a therapist well, yeah well, all right. right yeah but the last four days i've had this crippling anxiety Mm-hmm. Or this, um, it, it's like a cloud mm-hmm. that hangs over you, and it it's it, man. Even a cloud is not a good analogy because of the weight that it puts on top of me, and it's just this this fucking pressure, this load that comes over me. Like um, it it starts with just being antisocial. Yeah, right. I start withdrawing. I start. <laughs> Not going to things, not mm-hmm. showing up for myself, not mm-hmm. going to the gym, yeah, not doing my things that I tell you make me so happy when yes. I am doing them, right? Yep. We've talked about this so many times. About every morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know all these things that we do in our routine that are like that are healthy for us the exercise the meditating mm-hmm. the mindfulness writing mm-hmm. like all those things when i'm doing them i feel great okay and then the beginning of the resistance like in fucking yeah. in, in the book mm-hmm. um i never give you that book yeah the you art of war it? i've read the, it the, yeah, yeah. The, um, the war the war of, of art, art. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the war right? of art so <clears throat> like that resistance it starts eating and then the what i do is I would start withdrawing from things. I start, um, you know, things start getting messier. Like, I just looked in the mirror. This is how I know I'm on day five of it mm. because my eyebrow has completely grown in. Like, my unibrow is oh, starting yeah. to grow in <laughs> yeah. because I'm not maintaining it. All right. I thought maybe right? it was like a, like a sign. Like, no, it starts like I, growing I, <laughs> faster. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to be serious right now. I'm sorry. No, that's I'm fine. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, no, I, this is how I get through this without breaking down. Yeah. Is with comedy, with humor. So, the jokes that that crack the air are more than welcome <laughs> like like because that's how you, you'd plug through this shit because it 
That's how I've only gotten through life. It's why I'm so sarcastic. It's why I am the way I am is because I am the fucking laughing or the crying clown. You know, like inside I'm fucking destroyed. Outside I present this laughing, Mm -hmm. nice, happy image. Yes. And, you know, uh, that's the the unibrow growing in is a sign of me not taking care of myself. Yeah. You know, I get the cheeks. When my cheeks start getting furry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're not doing shape ups. <laughs> well, yeah, when my cheeks start getting hair in them. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's for me. That's like the, that's your unibrow. I my mine is the cheek. When the cheeks start getting hairy. No, it's unibrow. It's yeah, yeah. It's no, but I know. Hair, it's the beard and the hair that I'm wearing on my head. Bro, like, you and I are so similar, Ren. It's you. You but. just. I think everybody goes through this. Like, well, not everybody, but people that suffer from these kind of yeah fucking illnesses. Mm. you you start to self-destruct you um don't take care of yourself and you know it's a progression so like this i don't know what stage the cheek hair is for you on the line of progression <laughs> like you know what i mean like i'm trying to identify when it starts right i i, I don't know how to con- this is That's why i think ask you i need to freaking talk to someone to really dissect this like a professional mm-hmm. to get to the bottom of it I spend money on such stupid shit and I'm like, I have insurance and I'm like, this $50 or $75 yeah. a visit is going to kill me. Like, That's a very normal thing for people to do. Um, for when, when, when it's a very normal thing to do mm. to, to self, to spend that little self care on yourself, but to spend it other ways, it's help. I've yeah. seen it's a very normal thing. Like, wait, but you know, you don't want to spend it on yourself. Well, you'll spend 50 bucks on, I don't know, Stupid, eighth, going or, out. Or, yeah. yeah, whatever. Going, like, yeah, I don't go out. Other people go out. But you know what I mean? Like, so like, I quick, do you wouldn't even think about 50 yeah. bucks. I, sm- I smoke my video game, whatever yeah. it would be. Like, just think whatever. Yeah, I get food. it. Food. Food. Yeah, food. Food and uh, weed are mm-hmm. my vices that I spend yeah. money on. Other than that, I don't spend money on going places and my daughter. Like, yeah. But that's not a vice. That's just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a little different. savings for me because it's like, <laughs> yeah. this is money I'm not going to spend. So whatever I can spend it on her fast is like a savings. I'm, I'm investing in her happiness. I get that. But I was going to ask you if like you, you had a trigger or you knew something that causes it because, dude, I'm not, I'm not trying to compare, like compare, but I have the exact same thing. I will be. You know, it's mine. I'm sure I'm trying to identify like, where does this happen? Where does it come from? Mm. Right? Because my intentions today, I told everybody all weekend, I was excited because I was happy. Like I had a lot, we had a, even though the weekend was kind of crazy, but still like through the craziness, I was like, I'm going to come to open mic. I'm going to see you guys. I'm going to see big Nick. I was going to, I'm going to go. I was supposed to have a meeting before this <laughs> that I blamed on you guys or why I couldn't have the meeting. So I'm like, I got to, I got to meet the comedians. I can't meet you. But like, the whole day was planned out. A week ago and i wanted to do all this stuff mm. wanted to do everything i was going to go meet this guy at the, the cigar place and it was it was, a, it was a business meeting it was like for the dojo right it's like we're gonna meet i'm mean, putting this meeting off for like two months now we're supposed to meet there then i come here it was, everything was perfect perfectly lined up it's my day off meet you at seven right but then like all day today like i i didn't work out i did meditate a lot but i could not get myself to work out i could not i know what you're saying i, I didn't pick up any phone calls you're the only person that I really answered back with text besides my wife mm. today. Like, it's just, I, I get in these funks. I'm trying to identify when does it happen. It's like, you know, what is it? I'm like, scared to go to a doctor. Be like, they're going to be like, you're fucking nuts. <laughs> like, they're going to be like, you know what? You probably yeah. should, we, we need to admit you. No, you know why? I, I'm afraid <laughs> to go to the doctor because then I feel like they're going to tell me to change something I don't want to change. You know what I mean? And yeah. That's, it's like the, it's such a selfish part of me. And the same thing with the with um, going to the doctor for my stomach. It's like mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm. go follow through with everything yeah. because I'm afraid they're going to tell me I yeah, gotta change I my diet or something, which yeah. I know I do. But with with me, I know like now with um, what is bringing this on with me, I know it's like a lot of stress. Mm-hmm. And I think stress is probably a major um, <clears throat> stress. And then mix that with me taking my entire past with me everywhere i go yeah you know what i mean like it's it's like walking around with like santa claus's fucking uh sack Mm -hmm. not his nut sack but his toy sack sack. around (laughs) your shoulder of like all like my like my past and like the things that i like continuously really relive so like pressure from from work right stuff at work has been like roller coaster ish, mm-hmm. um, you know. I can't get into details. Yeah, but the <clears throat> the 
prospects of new opportunities mm -hmm. are looming and they're overwhelming. Yeah. And I don't know what I want to do. Mm hmm right so there's that pressure then there's this very morbid feeling that i continuously have what is it and it's of like about my mortality yeah right because my dad died when yeah. i was young yeah right and i put that mm -hmm. and my fear of that and like my um I put that fear on my daughter and she doesn't know anything about it. You know what I mean? But in the my energy mind, you mean that like I don't put it on you don't her. put it on her, but it's more of like I a, mean like I, when I say that I mean like I I use her to go through that emotion again of losing a parent. Right? So I'm terrified for yes, her this, yeah. of having to go the through fear, what yeah, I went through. Yeah. With the loss. the loss. So that constantly mm -hmm. like eats at me. Like I could I could think about it in like a daydream mm -hmm. anywhere. Like all of a sudden my mind will go there and I'll start playing it and I'll get choked up. Yep. yep. I could make myself cry if yep. I want to, just thinking about that. Yes. You know? And so that's like looming on me and like that's just a uh that's just a morbid place to have your mind in in that you know and thinking about i'm not gonna lie. i'm not gonna lie man i think i i it's for me it's constant myself and i think it's if i had to guess at least i for me i think it's a it's just like a whenever i, I chase any of my fears it's always about loss it's always um fear of losing out missing out and like like and that should never happen for me until my daughter was born mm. i was a fucking kamikaze you know like i didn't think i was gonna make 30 never thought i was making 30 the way i lived um how wild man i was and and i just i don't know i didn't i didn't, and then my daughter was born and it was like shit i gotta change i gotta change it up so then i for me i get the fear of all the shit i've done to myself all the damage i've done to myself people always make jokes about me that i'm still alive like people that know me from the past mm. It's always kind of like, <laughs> or like if I talk about an old age, I've had people say, <laughs> you think you're going to make it to 80? You know, so like that little voice is in your head, even yeah. though I'm not even close to that person. Um, and I do know some motherfuckers that went harder than me and are like in their 70s now or, or getting to their 70s. And, you know, so it's not it's not a, a valid fear. But I think I think the fear that the base of the fear, because I overanalyze fucking everything is it comes from loss like if you boil almost every fear down it's like what are you going to lose mm -hmm. you know and then some of my mentors have said to me a bunch and hopefully this will help you out is that in this moment right now is everything okay i'll just say it fucking people know so when sam triple sam triple said it to me fucking 10 times sometimes in a day Mm -hmm. When I call and I'm trying to not call him to freak out all the time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm in a crazy industry. Right. And it's like I've <laughs> been through the fucking pandemic. Right. And it's like the waves of the pandemic really have been crazy for me. Like in the beginning, it was like, no, we're going to fucking do this. And we did it. We all did it with the dojo. And it was crazy. And now it's three years. Right. And it's like we had this, uh, the, 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 the labor. You, you've you been with me through all of it, man. The labor shortage. Right. Where it's like we, we kind of kind of we can't really do a show because we have nobody to fucking serve these people. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we got through all that. And now it's just like a whole different thing. It's just the, the levels of, it's not just me. It's anybody that's been through the pandemic and owns a business and all this shit. And it's like, you gotta, you gotta keep moving and going. And, and it's like, in my mind, it's like the, the dollar crashed. Nobody has money. And Sam would be like, but has that happened yet? Mm -hmm. There's some other news going on that in, in, in our industry mm -hmm. that's really fucked up. And it's been fucked with me. I haven't talked to any of you guys about it. Cause it's a, it's weird. It's a very selfish thing for me. I'll just say it right now. It's a very selfish thing for me but it also fucks with me right so there's a law getting passed i don't know if you heard about this mm -hmm. there's a law it's been it's, it's really one of the triggers that's been fucking me up lately so a law is about to be passed right now that basically new jersey liquor licenses are going to be worthless and i don't have a 401k <laughs> you know so like that's kind of been my it's not mine yet but someday that would be mine it's like okay if i ever need to cash out i know this thing's worth a lot of money and they're about to get rid of those mm. Now the flip side is, it's to help the craft beer industry. And I love the craft beer people. I love them. 
So it's like it, oh, it's it's shit. a real weird one, man, because yeah, all the restaurant owners want to fucking now. fight these guys. They're yeah. telling me you got to fight. So it's this very weird thing that I'm going through right now. But the bottom line is I'm just bringing that up to you because I don't want to be vague. I just want to tell you the point. The, the point is Sam will say to me, but has it happened yet, Mike? You ju- you're calling me freaking out that you lost everything, but you didn't yet. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm just telling this to you, Vic, just so you could. I think I know you very well that a lot of things. A lot of things aren't here, right? Even before I met Sam, right? I'm going to back you up even more because it's the same theory. It's the same It's the same um, idea, mindset of another man it just came into my life out of nowhere and this dude fucking helped me out. I was having... So before this place, I had my, my place in Pequonic or whatever that was a TIFF that it was huge, whatever, but I sold it and I had a, a, a little hamburger spot and an ice cream shop. I was trying to get out of alcohol. That place, the other place besides before this one was a, was, it was a place where there was fights happen. I was constantly in court for like shit that would go down. Drug I love deep. that place too. I had my birthday there. You know, it was, listen, it was a great <laughs> place, but not like when I was trying to change my life and have a little girl and like, like you get a call at three in the morning every night. Hey, yeah. someone's head is split. Some like, you know, oh, this guy got caught selling Coke in the parking lot or it was just always something. I mean, it was crazy. I, I believe the place was even cursed. I mean, there was one time my wife was pregnant. She called me. She's like, I was, she was like, like centimeters from getting killed a guy fucking had a heart attack behind the wheel and went like 80 miles into the side of the building just missed her went through and he actually he missed he went through the build whatever into a house died it was crazy wow. like it was just like a cursed weird place shit right so i was like but for me it was like i gotta get out of alcohol so my brilliant idea was all i know is food is let's start a hamburger joint and let's start a yogurt place an ice cream place and um it didn't work out did not work out and i had a little girl who was one years old I was used to making really good money and I thought I was going to do it all on my own. And I had landlords for the first time in my life and they were fucking calling me all the time looking for their money. And, uh, it was a stressful, crazy, crazy time. I, I was, I was, Quantic was done. It got sold and the deal wasn't that great, but it was sold. And these two places, like I said, the phone was just all nonstop was landlords or creditors calling me. I was losing everything. I was, it was, it was hard. It was a hard time. And, uh, my blood pressure was th- uh, through the roof, about to have a stroke. A dentist noticed it. I don't know how a dentist figured out my blood pressure was so fucked up. She's like, you got to go to the hospital like, now. Your teeth are going to explode. She, yeah, she's like, your gums, gums right? So so they're like, you know, your, your blood pressure or whatever. So I was like, you know, they put me on medication, didn't like that shit. Anyway, long story short, I ended up going to this, uh, this acupuncturist. And I, I became close with him. He was helping with the blood pressure and, and, and relaxing. And he was, you know, whatever. He started talking to me about things. And, and um, he's like, I'm writing this book called The Worry-Free Process. I don't know if it's even ever got published or whatever. He's like, would you be my test study for it? I said, fuck, sign me up, dude. Let's do it. And, and to boil it down, there was two things that this, this man told me. And maybe nowadays it's, it's more out there, this information. But I'm going I'm to tell you, basically, if you boil down this guy's book, the two things were humans are basically machines, right? So if it's a fight or flight. When you, when all of a sudden the crater's calling you, boom, you get dumped with all these hormones and shit in your body that you don't even know because we're, we're supposed to be like cavemen or whatever. So he would say, if that's happening, run in place, do pushups, right? Just get the, 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 get the, the, the hormones, the whatever chemicals that your body releases and get them out because it's telling you to run. There's a tiger behind you. Mm. Now that creditor is the tiger in, in this 21st century, but it does, can't really kill you. It's just a stress. So now you got to think, am I in immediate danger? Because there might be a time you're in immediate danger and you might need to really fucking run and you really might need those things. Mm-hmm. But 98% of the times in this world, it's all here. It's all between our ears, right? It's all bullshit. So that simple question of like, am I in danger right now? Did everything happen right now in this moment? That's where you, you got to, that, that's, that's what this man told me about also like working out real quick just to get the energy out, like do push-ups, do uh, jumping jacks. I just, I've been teaching my daughter this because my daughter's starting to get anxiety out of nowhere. I'm like, honey, you're an athlete. Just start doing push. She started doing it. She's like, you're right. Somebody taught me that when I was a kid, like, holy shit. It's, it's like this little like cheat code, like a biohack or something. Boom. Mm. But the second part is to think about that Vic and, and everything you're saying. And I'm not, I'm not downplaying it, dude. Cause I live in the same exact space as you. I'm in my head constantly. I'm constantly calling people to tell me, is this happening to you right now? And if somebody can check you with that sometimes, and you could think about that, think about it. Like a lot of times you're, you're worried about your mortality, mm-hmm. but you're alive. You know, you're here. You're Once good. I'm dead, I can't worry about it anymore. <laughs> yes. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like that's, yeah. and everything you said is funny because like, that's what I, that's what keeps me alive is yeah. everything that you said. Yeah. Right. Because I've thought of going off the deep end, mm-hmm. like this isn't even worth 
Yeah. What am I doing here? Yep. You know? And I never... I understand. I, I, wouldn't, I would never say that I'm suicidal mm -hmm. because I never thought... I've never tried to kill myself. Yeah. Right? Or mm -hmm. I've never even planned to kill myself. Yeah. But I've always had this thought, like, things would be a lot easier if I wasn't here anymore. Yeah. Right? Like, if yeah. I was dead, this would be a yeah. moot fucking point. Right? And... um. I don't know if I ever told you the story about how I got into comedy. No, sure. Um, I was writing for a couple of years. Me and um, my ex-wife went to a Joey Diaz show at Gotham Comedy. No oh, shit, sure. right? okay. No, I never heard this. we fucking laughed so <laughs> yeah. hard. Okay. And we were on our way home, and we were talking. And I'll never forget that fucking night. We were talking in the car and la talking about his bits and laughing, and I'm saying them again. Mm -hmm. And she was like, she was like, how come you never did comedy? And I was like, what? She's like, how come you never did comedy? Like, you're always yeah. so funny. Like, every everywhere we go, you're always making people laugh. Mm -hmm. You're always putting the show on, you know? When I, and especially, like, at family parties and mm -hmm. stuff. I start making fun of all my cousins and yeah. shit. Like, and she was like, how come you never did comedy? And I was like, I don't know. I never thought about it. Mm -hmm. And she was like, huh. And then, like, we just left it there. And then it was just a quiet ride home yeah. because I'm in my head. Like, why didn't I ever do comedy? Oh, like, yeah. how come nobody ever told me? And then I like, all of a sudden, I'm like, huh. So I start writing things down, mm -hmm. right? Two years go by. I'm just writing things down. I looked up a couple open mics a few times, but I never had the balls to go there, yes. right? So yep. a couple of years, I'm just writing things uh -huh. on my phone or on little pieces of paper. I think of something funny yeah. and I write it. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to podcasts with comedians, so they're talking about comedy constantly. Yep. So I'm like, oh, I'm fucking stuck in this space now where I'm like surrounded by comedy. And then um, New Year's, my cousin, uh, her boyfriend, who I'm their godfather of their their daughter, mm -hmm. hangs himself. Oh. Right? And this was New Year's oh. Eve. I think it was like, the, it was like the night before New Year's Eve. And... Um, we didn't we found out about it the you know after the day after new year's and um you know him and my cousin had some problems he left the house he had his own apartment mm -hmm. and you know um their daughter my goddaughter's 7 years old you know and uh you know he hung himself in the closet of his apartment and that fucked me up yeah man fucked me up yeah. because um you know we weren't fucking best of friends mm -hmm. But every time we hung out, we were very close. We've had very good conversations. Yeah. You know, very deep conversations. We've hung out, you know. Uh, he was a pothead, too, so we always smoked. We played dominoes together at family functions mm -hmm. and shit. He was my fucking boy. Damn. And, um, Did you have any idea he was going to do it? That's what fucked me up. No. That's no when sign the of the deep conversations or anything? That's when the mirror. Yeah. I get fucking goosebumps yeah, just thinking man. about That's when the mirror shone in my face. And it was like, you're fucking close, bro. Yeah. That's how close you are. Because yeah. I never in my life would have expected that kid to do that. And if, and then, you know, again, my, I have a daughter. Mm -hmm. He has a daughter. I'm yeah. like, he's fucking leaving his daughter. Like, I was, bro, I was fucking destroyed. Yeah, I know. It's hard. It was suicide is a real hard one. Yeah, so man. It left me with so many things. questions. It's I'm like, like yeah. what? You know? And yeah. and I never told my cousin or any of my fan and everybody. My, the only person I knew was my my um, my ex. How, how like, deeply it really rattled me. I was fucked up for a fucking few weeks. Um. Then that was wow. New Year's Eve thing, and then that February, like that, my mind snapped. I was like, "I'm fucking doing comedy. Like I'm doing this," and that's that's Feb February of that same year. I went and to the um. I didn't. I stumbled what some, onto it. Yeah, too. what was it? Uh, at the place, the comedy I run now every Tuesday night. It Nikki's is, right? opened. Yeah, Nikki's Bar and Grill. So that's my friend from high school. She opened the bar, Nikki. And she just happened to go And to... I was like, let me go say hi and support the bar. She's had it open for a, f a few months already. Mm -hmm. And I haven't come by to say, I was like, let me go support her, say yeah. hi. And I went on a Wednesday night because mm -hmm. it was Wednesday wings. I saw a thing that said 50 <laughs> cent wings. Right? So I was like, oh, perfect. I'll go say what's up. I'm going to eat a fucking shitload of wings. And it was open mic night when I went there. And you just went up. No, I didn't. Oh, you did I, okay. I didn't because I just went. 
because I didn't know there was comedy, so I didn't have anything prepared. Okay, okay. Right? So okay. I go there, I sit at the bar, and I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, oh, it's comedy, uh, open mic night. She's like, why you want to sign up? I was like, nah, I'm not doing this shit. So Did I you see anyone you wings. know now that day? I'm sitting there eating my wings, <laughs> and who's fucking, and I'm like, man, this is fucking crazy. This is terrifying. I could never do this. And then I saw somebody up there on stage, bomb, and just anyone we know? eat it. Jesse Montanez. <laughs> oh, really? Right? Jesse Montanez stood up there with a notebook where he couldn't see the crowd. Mm-hmm. He just had it up in his face and mm-hmm. he just read his jokes. Read them, looked, nobody <laughs> laughed. Notebook back up again, read them, looked, nobody laughed. Read them. Oh, <laughs> somebody cracked the fucking, yeah, somebody laughed there on that. No one. shit. Right. Oh, so, you know, like I saw him do that and get off stage like it was nothing. And I was like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see it's your mind. So bad. I'm watching, I'm in my mind. Right now, I see Jesse doing that. It's yeah, a younger yeah. version of Jesse. Jesse just, he has this big five star <laughs> notebook and he had That's... it up. And he was like, he was younger five yeah. years ago. He yeah. was a lot younger, you know? And pre pandemic, everyone looked younger. Yes. <laughs> I don't give right? a fuck. Yeah, who you everybody are. aged. Everyone, yeah, it aged right? everyone. So he fucking, uh, and I was just to myself, I was like, oh, it wasn't that bad, bro. He didn't die when he got off stage. I was like, I'm fucking next week. I'm fucking doing it. Oh shit! I'm coming back and doing it. So next week I come back, and and Nikki's like, "What are you doing here again?" <laughs> she's, like, you, she's like, "Go to fuck up." I know you want to do comedy. She tells me she's Dominican. So yeah, she's like, go to fuck up there. Why you keep coming here? Just oh, sign shit. up, you pussy. You know, like yeah. And I fucking signed up. I went up there and I fucking I got a few laughs and the fucking rest is history. How many jokes did you do? Um, I don't know. I think I did like six. You did? Yeah, I had a lot of material. Like I had a lot of things. That, that first I, time going I up there, how fucking up. scary is it? Oh, it was fucking terrifying. It was terrifying until I started talking. Once I started talking, so, like, all right, I was like, oh, this. It just so came it was more natural. the bullshit. It was getting up there. It's the same. It. It's the With same everything. problem I have every time. Uh, that kid Kurt that posts memes all the time. That he's really good. The comedy Kurt comedy Kurt Ryan, I think his name is or something. And he does the Instagram memes. I forward them to you sometimes. Oh, okay. Right? He does these comedy memes. And he's fucking great at making memes. He mm-hmm. makes awesome memes. Okay. Like if you're a comic and you see his memes, like his shit. It's like inside <laughs> joke after inside okay. joke. It's great. And he posted this one um, about... Uh, it's like a crying and a laughing, and it's like laughing on the way to the mic when you're driving, and then and then there's like another of the same guy crying in the same car, and it's like on the way home <laughs> for the mic. But for me, it's reverse. Yeah. For me, it's crying on the way to the mic, on the way to the yeah. mic. I mean, on the way to the show, on the way to any any, on the way to the mic, on the way to the show. I'm like not normal. Like I'm fucking anxious. Mm-hmm. I'm you know like uh, on edge. And once I want to get it over with. Once it's done. And mm-hmm. I have a fucking great time, regardless if I bomb or not. And I get off, then I'm like happy. I'm relieved, and like I feel accomplished. Yeah, you know. And I feel like I feel that way with almost eighty percent of my tasks in my life. Yeah, because you don't want to do like them. the comfort zone thing. Yes, you don't want to do them. You get out of the comfort zone. That's why, like for me, when I was texting you, like if I didn't have to drop my daughter off mm-hmm. th- today, and like if if uh, her mother picked her up, mm-hmm. I would have probably called, like texted you, I'm like, hey man, I'm not going tonight. Yeah. Cause I was home and I didn't have to leave, but I had to leave and go drop her yeah, off. So you already, and I'm just like, have to battle, power through it. You know, like I got to power through it. Like I've been doing that in the morning, every morning I've been waking up comfort zone, bitch, comfort zone, bitch, comfort zone, bitch, alarm off. Like I wake up, I go to the bathroom. It's not like I can't wake up. Yeah. I'm just like, I'd rather be under the blanket like a little bitch, mm-hmm. you know? Do you think it's something with like, I know like our brain tries to keep us safe. Like I've heard that before that it's like a, it's a false thing with your brain and like your consciousness. Comfort, like, yeah. yeah. Right. So it wants, it tells you to be comfortable even though that's a lie. Yeah. Like comfort is a lie. Right. Like I think I'm, it is. A, like I think it's a bad habit. I think it's a bad coping mechanism. Yeah. That yes. you develop. Right, because that's something I did as a little kid. When I was a little kid, I used to ball up the the corner of the fucking comforter mm-hmm. and make it like I'd fold it over so that the I'd, and I'd hold it like this, and then the top would be like a little puffy thing. Yeah, and that was like my mm-hmm. my stuffed animal. That was my best. Yeah, friend, yeah, yeah. Was the corner of yeah, the thing, I know, and I, I used know. to curl up with that. Like, and I'm yeah. like curling up with that in life. Mm-hmm. That's smoking weed for me. Mm-hmm. That's food for me. Yes. And that's staying home for me. Those are my three curling up with a blanket, mm-hmm. safe zone mm-hmm. things. And I'm like, just very tired of being in the fucking safe zone because yeah, man, happens. In the it safe doesn't. Zone. It doesn't. And and um, it's crazy for myself. Like whenever I have got out of my comfort zone, it's just when life begins when crazy things happen it's when the good stuff happens but Mm -hmm. i will still 
do the same thing you're saying. I yeah. won't want it. You know, how many times do I hide in my office during a show? <laughs> right? How many times do I like just let me just sit in my office for a little bit and I'll just listen to the rhythm of the laughter instead of being out there or whatever. You know, just mm-hmm. kind of give you some kind of example of things that you would see of me doing. But like it's like I know what you mean, man. It's just uh I, I think it's something in our brains that, that actually protects us, but you know, and then everything is so comfortable nowadays. That's the other problem. That things are so comfortable to begin with, mm-hmm. and then we get used to it. Like, have you ever done the cold showers? Right? Like, I there was a love time, them, bro. I think back of that time that I was telling you when I was when things were tough, right? When I think back to myself, then though, like things were really hard, and then I kind of snapped, and the situation was still the same. I was doing horrible when I started here. It was real fucking bad, uh, like. But for something snapped in my head, bro, I was like, I'm, I was sick and tired of it. I was done. I was doing the cold showers. I was doing Wim Hof breathing because that shit would like get me high for free, right? Um, I was uh, going into like go. I would literally just go to some places like uh, 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 different spots in New Jersey, just park my car and walk like the Great Swamp and different like places alone, mm-hmm. just go and walk and then and I would and I would do that, do those things. And I would, it would get me inspired and, and, and things started, you know, started happening. And I, I changed. And then like, I remember my diet was fucking impeccable. Like I was like, that was the one thing I could control. Like I can't control finances and all the other things right now, but like control what goes in. So I was doing like, like, I guess it was keto back then. Right. And I remember like, I remember in my garden looking out being like, I feel so good right now. Like everything around me sucks, Mm -hmm. but I have control of like, but it was all because I was doing things that were not comfortable. I was waking up like the rest of the, everything else doesn't seem so early. No, but everything else was better. And then I look at somebody like, like like the rock. Uh, I just saw some weird tweet. I don't even know why I saw the tweet, but it was a tweet where he was like talking about a shower or something. And he was like explaining his day and and his work. And I'm like, damn, or like, uh, what's that, that, that action star that was with Marky Mark, uh, Mark Wahlberg, right. They're all talking about him. You hear about him, like his family wakes up in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, They all wake up and like pray and work out and all that. And you look at these great people and they don't stop. And that's another conversation I had with Sam today too, which is like this weird fine line too, though, where you have to, you know, you come from an immigrant family. You know, I, I, my grandparents were like, for, at least for me, like we have this thing in us too, about you, if you're not working, you're lazy. Mm. So like, this is weird, fine line too, where I could beat myself up too. It's like I can't really relax because I feel like I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. But you know what I mean. But once you, you know, I'm mixing shit up right now. But I'm just in no, my no, mind thinking because saying. like it's this weird. It's balance. I guess it's all about balance, and balance. I don't have balance but it's at also all. About ex- <laughs> you're it's also like- exhausting your mind and your your body with those other things. Like you're not just, you know, like those are things you're doing that you're not consumed with thinking about all that other shit that makes you fucking sick. And just for the record, I um, don't come from an immigrant family. I don't know if you remember Willie Barsana's joke when he was here about Puerto Ricans. That's but true. We're citizens. That is true. That's very <laughs> we're true. Born citizens. That is very true. I didn't think about and that. We're fucking proud of yeah, it. Yeah. All right, Willie. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> all right, Willie. You're actually more American than uh, my family. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so fucking true. Oh my but, god! Yeah, man. But it's like I think about that time, right, where I was doing like I was like self exploring. That's when I was going to all those ceremonies, you know, and doing all that. Which I think I took that too far. I think in the beginning I was doing it great, and then I be yeah. I think that was another part of me where I went like just too far down that end. Um, but I was like at a breaking point. I mean, you could literally see there's a picture of me of my first ceremony where I look like a different human being, like a totally different person. And and I was at my breaking point where it was just enough was enough. And it was either I hate to say what you're saying. Like it was either going to suck on the end of one of my fucking guns or fucking figure it out. Yeah. And, um, you know. That's I don't why so know. many men commit suicide, dude. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard, man, to be a provider and to to fit, you know. To it's 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 a little bit of a hard thing, and we're not allowed to talk about it because we're like bitches if we do, mm-hmm. you know. If you talk about this shit, you're a bitch. At least that's the way it always seems I still to me. Feel like that? It's still it does. Even though I know it's wrong, I still feel like the minute I like before when I was talking about like all the stuff I was saying in my mind, I'm like, you sound like such a fucking bitch. Yeah. Right now. Why are you being so weak? I don't think you are, but Why I know what you mean. Why are you revealing so weak? But it's like, it's not. It's acknowledging your struggle, mm-hmm. and then you're not weak because you're still here. Yeah. We're still going at it every single day. And, like, that's one of the main things. Like, what you said was like, what about now? 
right? How, yes. Is anything wrong right now? No. Mm-hmm. But the other thing that really, really gets, um, like gets me through is that I'm not I, I'm not a loser until I quit. True. You know what I mean? Very like true. I haven't lost until yeah. I quit. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like if I tomorrow's not going to be as bad as today or it might be worse Mm -hmm. but as long as i get another one i still get another chance for things to be better yeah you know what i mean yeah like yes i do know what you mean and and you yeah and for me another thing that like to get into that middle baseline where things are the highs aren't too high or the lows are too low is when i had to give up drugs and alcohol when i was doing drugs and alcohol like I was, I'm very good at doing drugs and alcohol. <laughs> I'm really good at it. Like I could, I, I know how to time them. I know how to do them. However, when you get to a certain age, the hangover comes and that's where it just throws the, everything off, right? If you feel like shit, this is like I said, I'm talking for myself. If I would drink a lot, wake up feeling like shit, then it would really, my lows would be really low and my highs would be really, really high. Mm-hmm. But I'm realizing that as I am newly sober, but as I'm sober or even I had a, um, lengths of sobriety, it's like, I stay in the middle of the wave, right? It's not too high, too low. Like you were saying, some days might be better than others and, and life still happens and it's not this great thing, still get another chance. but it's a little easier. And what you also said about the giving up thing, man, that's why this fucking dojo is still here because like Vic, I, I related with you so much uh, this weekend when the power went out When the power went out and I thought the show was going to be great this weekend. If the listeners, uh, we had a transformer blow. It was a busy night. I mean, this is just, the life of, of having a restaurant just stuff like this happens it was a friday night we were packed we had a show scheduled that was on pace to sell out and a transformer blew like at eight o'clock and we were out of power for over an hour and it was also 90 degrees in new jersey that day <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like everything was against us but but that night when i finally got home because my intentions that day earlier that day i'm texting you guys i couldn't wait it was a jersey show mm-hmm. so it was gonna be all of our friends Mm-hmm. We knew it'd be podcasting going on, and you guys still got to have fun. But mm-hmm. I was there at 10 a.m., and I was shot by the end of the day. And I got home, and like, you know, only half of the ticket holders showed up. So now instead of a show with, you know, maybe 60, 70, we had like 25. Um, and I just, I just, I literally was, I had one of those moments. Remember, you had that moment with Jessica Kirsten where you're like, I don't even know why I'm doing comedy. You said yeah, that to me. I, don't, I, don't I was like, it. why do I do this? I literally went home and I don't want to make you guys because the bottom line, guess what? I'm still here. It's yeah. Monday and I'm fucking here and I ain't going anywhere. Mm-hmm. But I had that feeling and it was the closest I got in a really long time. Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Like, you can go, Michael Romanelli, I can go to another, I can go in the food industry or the beer industry and make probably double. And at five, six o'clock, it's over. It doesn't matter if the place burns down. I don't have to worry about if 50 people show up to see Bob Levy <laughs> or maybe 200 show up and we only have room for 100. Like, I don't have to worry about any of that shit. But there's something in my brain that just, I won't I won't quit. And it really has a lot more to do with comedy than the the family business. I mean, at this point now, I'm at, a, I'm at an age where it's like, what else am I going to do? I mean, I guess I could take that. But with the comedy thing, it's like five years I've been doing this and we've had ups and downs and all over the place and it's like but now like the vision the vision of me i've been a crazy person talking about everything that's happening right now it's happening right now is it is it exactly how i want it no i want this studio to look like you know joe rogan's studio and i want you know downstairs yeah Mm -hmm. but 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 you know what but the most important part vic is like the most important part is like i couldn't assemble a group of comedians like i can't do this myself i need a team and and now they're all around like there's people that will that will help to do the podcast there's people that will help you know street team like we have we have we got we got comedians working as servers i've been saying that forever like that's how it's got to be for it to work for them to you know Mm -hmm. and it took a long time and i'm just saying all this because if anyone is listening out there like first of all my life to the outside people think i'm a millionaire (laughs) they think a lot of things about me that are not true but that's okay that's just it's perception right Mm. or that or a lot of comedians think that I'm killing it. Every show is a sellout and all that. And listen, I'm killing it in in this crazy industry. I am kind of killing it mm-hmm. because look at the people that come through here. Yeah. But it's not this the reward that 
that that that everyone can think and i would tell Vinny this all the time because he's young is like um and i know you've heard this because you listen to the same podcast and things but it's like that that quote was that uh comparison is the thief of joy mm-hmm. and that's a hard one for me dude like that's as i'm in my 40s i'm starting to really get it but all through my 30s i was that motherfucker i was like wow well, this guy I went to school with you know he's got these amount of cars and he yeah. has this and he has that and, and he could do that and he takes his family on vacations and they do this and they do that or this person has this or whatever it is mm-hmm. i used to be the root of my insecurities too me yeah, too yeah. man i stopped doing that in my 30s <laughs> i uh, stopped in my night, 40s because no, <laughs> i had all that um intensive freaking therapy inpatient and outpatient for fucking five years and that was one of the things i got to the root of was i was always comparing myself to other people and yes it's the worst thing you can do, not only because it's the thief of your own joy, but you're making that up. You're making stuff up. You see how other people would make up stuff about you and think that you're rich and think that you're yes. doing all this stuff and you're yes. not. I used to do that to other people, right? If I saw somebody driving a BMW, mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, that guy has it made. He is living it up. And meanwhile, he could be in debt. He could have uh no respect from anybody yeah you can have no loved ones like you have no idea so the fact that i'm even making up a story that's yeah. making me insecure mm-hmm. is on me yes right so i i started changing the story mm-hmm. i would be like oh that guy in the beamer it was like maybe he's miserable and i probably is too right and i'd laugh and mm-hmm. then and then the next thought would be like it doesn't matter anyway Yes, <laughs> you're right, and, and you're right. Doesn't matter. But anyway. I do that shit so, so bad. much. Yeah, yeah. It took me a while to. It took to me stop. a long time to stop. Yeah, you know, it's another thing I always say. It's like I give such good advice to all you guys, all my employees. And you never stop. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you never stop. You never stop. You just only talk. You have a better dialogue. You, you realize you're doing it. You're more aware you're of very it. Very aware. I because I'm aware of it when comedy. Mm-hmm. It's when I start seeing people mm-hmm. on shows and my friends on shows, and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Why? And then I'm like, wait. Like, they probably think that when they see you're on shows. They, they, <laughs> like, they this do. Is so <laughs> stupid. Yeah. You know? Like, and I'm instantly able to diffuse that from blowing out of, to like, in some insecure bomb. Yeah, man. It's just this thing. It's just that it's, it's something that it's, it's terrible. It's not good for you. It, it, like I said, it's just destroyed me. Um, and then what people think about you is, is another thing, but it's also like no one's business. I know I'm saying a lot of cliches, but it's just all this little stuff is so true, man. And, um, I don't know, Vic. I I think um, is it is it open? I opened it, but I haven't drank it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. man. I um, I'm not quitting. You know, I don't think any of you are quitting anytime soon. I, I quit comedy once a week. Yeah, yeah. I quit comedy once. Yeah. A week. Where I'm just like, why am I doing this? <laughs> I don't blame you guys. I uh, get it. Like I the opportunity it. I was talking about. Part of my my hesitancy is that. It could blow me up into something so much bigger, mm-hmm. but I I'm like I I'm, I can't sacrifice anything else. I have no time for you. I know Vinny wants to start another podcast with me, <laughs> and like we were talking about names today, the V Spot mm-hmm. or some shit like that. Yeah, where, you know, like we're thinking about names, but it's like I don't have no time. I know. I'm like, all right, we could do this podcast, but you're gonna have to edit it. You're gonna have to promote yeah. it. You're gonna have to yeah. do all that stuff. I'll record it mm-hmm. and and you know edit it and po- and post it, but then you got to do everything else, the promotion yeah. and and yeah, I mean, it's a lot of edit. shit. It's so much. It's a lot of shit. And like, <laughs> I, it's it, I'm laughing because this is like stuff that I've. Um, that I, I continuously talk about, like beating myself up about what I'm not doing, but not acknowledging everything that I am. Doing. I was gonna say you what you're what you do a <laughs> lot, dude. You do a lot, and I say it to people all the time, and that's a big reason why I, I know how early you wake up. I say to myself all the time, "How does Vic do it?" You know, so you do a lot, and and progress and where you're gonna get that's just i think you just got to keep showing up and keep doing it and and you're not that far into comedy if you really think about it you know it's um and how how those was five years right we're five years of comedy now yeah, my six, six yeah, coming yeah. up yeah. so how many of those six years did you really do comedy like you have this last year if you're gonna be honest with yourself oh no this, is- <laughs> this year you gave it your first i will say if as i know you this last year you're yeah, really do- yeah. you're really doing it you're really mm-hmm. doing it mm-hmm. you might not feel like here but you're really doing it you you hardly ever miss a show and you only do it with his family mm-hmm. for for work here mm-hmm. as a doorman 
I see you get up more than I've ever seen you get up. Plus all the other shows you do, and you've been doing this very religious the pod the vcast mm -hmm. you've been doing for how consistently yeah. now for this year yeah. so this year plus work you have no issues with work you know you're working and you're going through personal shit mm -hmm. and you are you're you're doing your thing man yep pick my daughter up every day from school yeah i mean yeah yeah you do. <laughs> she sleeps over uh that's every week one yeah. she sleeps over once every week and some and twice twice a week one week of the year of the month yeah you're doing it man i do a lot for sure you're doing and it. then like um but I waste a lot of time. I know. I waste a lot of time, and my gripe with myself is, yeah, all right, I do a lot. But I also waste a lot of goddamn time on my phone, mm -hmm. with video games, mm -hmm. especially. But this is the, um, when the uh, when the depression kicks in. Yeah. Right? Then I withdraw. Yeah. And then I fucking not <laughs> fire that Xbox up. I'll fucking get lost. I like to stay up late. Yeah, I know. I'm I get that. Smoke heavy. I get it. I don't know? smoke, but I'll stay up and I will yeah, play yeah, my I kids just, switch until fucking oh four in the morning. I'm like, oh, no, no, it's not sickness, four. Is it really bro. four? You know? <laughs> no, 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 no. We didn't go past three, did we? Come on. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> He's going to be so happy when he turns it on and sees all this shit I got him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like what I'll tell myself. Dude, it's the fucking <laughs> rationalization of it, but. Yeah, man, I, like, and this is the other thing. Another fucking thing that I'm complaining about but is also another accomplishment is that I've really um, drawn back on how much I smoke. Like, I don't smoke during the day no more. Yeah. Right? I've only been smoking yeah. after I, I get, um, after my daughter. After your shit. Yeah, yeah, like after I drop like my daughter off. responsibilities Yeah, or once whatever. work and everything. I was smoking in the morning, bro, mm -hmm. like. I, outside of my car mm -hmm. smoke then get in my car and fucking drive to work oh i know i get it you know and that's seven in the morning and I'm like uh so i've i've reduced how much i've smoked but i'm in the midst of coping with all of these feelings sober that's right? all it's rough so that's it's like, rough. I'm dealing with that right now. That's it's such rough. a it's <laughs> such it's a rough, rough thing, man. <laughs> and I gotta find some new outlets. And and I think what's making it worse is not going to the gym. Yeah. Uh, in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um. But I, I'm I'm gonna start with that. It's just oh my god, I'm such a fucking bitch. You know what though, Vic? Another thing though, that I think we I get, and I think it's bullshit. Is like that pull you up for the bootstraps kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. That just if you work out, everything's gonna be better. Mm -hmm. Just if you eat right, everything's gonna be better, and it all helps. Yeah, but it doesn't fucking. It, let me. One thing that I feel like is a little too much out there is like you just do it. Just like it's mm -hmm. like with psychedelics. Same thing with psychedelics. People talk about psychedelics now, like you take it and you're fixed. That shit ain't true at all. It changed my perspective. It changed my entire life. It changed. Mm -hmm. it slowed me down. It made me learn about love. It did a lot of things for a good for for me in for the better. Kill the ego. Yeah. Yeah. It did that, but it didn't. It didn't. Still it didn't turn me into a superhuman. It did not, and I don't think it works for everybody. I think some people actually becomes an egomaniac. Like it's not. It's, so my point is the same thing with working out. Like I know the endorphins work. Mm -hmm. I know if you eat healthier, your brain feels better. I like when I was on a, a healthy fat based diet my brain it felt that felt kind of like a super pill for me when that was happening it's just so hard to get there it is so hard to like really have no sugar in your body and all that where you where you switch over to the yeah. fat as the energy it's such a hard but once you do get there for me that was the one thing it did it feel great. it did feel really good yeah, yeah, yeah but like if i was just to go to the gym right now tomorrow which i know i should right and i and i don't get my five days in if i'm lucky i'll get like two mm -hmm. but like if i did get a full week of five let's say or six days in and i ate healthy like you're not going to feel, I'm not going to feel amazing at the end of the week. If anything, I'm going to feel fucking worse. It just takes time. I, I, that's another thing with, with, with the, the quick fixes, the video games, all that, the phone. Mm -hmm. Everything is so fast and quick that yeah. the stuff that takes a while for it to make you feel better, it takes a while. Yeah. So it's not one, two, three. Yeah. No, I don't think it's a, it's a quick fix. I just think it's like, if I'm doing all these things, now what else could be the fucking problem? You know what I mean? Like, if I'm... If I'm working, if I do my morning routine where I get up, go to the gym, meditate, mm -hmm. cold shower, mm -hmm. and then I go to work and I don't eat until I leave, until I get home, Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and um, so I'm fasted. Yeah, you're talking like the <clears throat> sack, yeah. Right? If I do all those things, like I, I feel 
like the rest of the day is just easier to deal with. Your problems don't go away, mm-hmm. right? All these stresses that I'm talking about don't go away. Yeah. The other stress that's uh, that I forgot that's also weighing on me is Austin, right? It's like I set myself up for this. I've been questioning. Did I take too much time? I don't even have a room booked yet. <laughs> I'm going to do comedy. You'll be fine. Wow, oh, my God. What if I do get on Kill Tony? What fucking joke am I going to say that anybody's going to fucking laugh at? Like, So like that's the other... <laughs> Wow, mental. I want you to think like you are getting well, on Kill Tony, and you know what you're gonna do, and you know, fucking crush that in your head. That's what I mean. But that, that's not where I've been. But, so I have yeah. that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so all of that mixed, I feel like the 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 gym is a place where you can sort that shit out in your head. I know because you're not I, thinking about it. I know. You know what I mean? I do know. I, for some reason, I just can't personally i know but i personally just i feel like like an old weak if it was man. a blunt like, i just could like, do it if like, it was a blunt i'd wake up every if you told oh, to me smoke and work out go to gold's gym oh. every morning 4 30 let's smoke a blunt i'd be there every fucking morning oh me too like clock i would meet you there coffee we lift. blunt oh, and we could yeah. yeah but like not even lift i'm just saying like the 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 what i would get out of bed for i oh, i would get oh, out of bed oh, to oh. smoke the I blunt saying, if i could smoke a blunt and work out i work out every yeah, fucking yeah, morning no, I, I just can't do, do that, that right now i've <laughs> tried to dangle that carrot in front of me but it's like if, if you if i didn't have the weed and you had the weed at gold and you're like here just come four three in the morning you're gonna come hang out with me every yeah. morning and like i would be there every morning yes you know like i wake up every morning and go to work and i do it without question like, mm-hmm. i don't use sick days i'm using sick days now because they're telling me i have to yeah <laughs> because i have right. rollover time you yeah. know and i don't want they don't want it to freaking expire yeah because then i'll lose them so mm-hmm. i gotta fucking take sick days but I don't do that when I'm investing in myself because the gym does make me feel so much better. Like it makes me feel good. It makes me feel less shitty about myself, mm-hmm. like my fucking mm-hmm. gut and everything. Like all of this is a sign of just me self destructing. Oh yeah. Know? I know. So I know what you mean, man. I know what you mean. That. But it's like I guess consistency. But I think again, there's a fine line of us not beating ourselves up too much either. Yes. Because I'm telling you, you have For come sure. a long way. Um, I don't know if you've ever taken medication, but mm. that's a big reason why I'm scared to go talk to a doctor. Yeah. Uh, because I, I have been put on. I've been put on it before, and I can't. I can't yeah, ever I do that again. That. I've been on every fucking drug in the possible, like street drug in the world. The hardest thing to get off of was antidepressants. I'd rather suffer like a fucking man in silence. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like my father and those before him. All right, so what if my dad didn't live past 33 because he was stressed out and doing heroin? <laughs> Talk about warm blankets. <laughs> yeah, Jesus warm blanket. Christ, I know. And then, you know, like as a as a kid, I used to, um, you know, I didn't know like that my dad did drugs, mm-hmm. right? Uh, my dad was like my hero yeah. growing up. Everybody always talked about him. And then I found out when I was 15 that he died of AIDS. Yeah. And I, like all my life, I thought he died of leukemia. Yeah, and then I found the birth certificate in the safe. I was going wow. through. I, I forgot I was getting something from my mom's safe. Wow! And I came across an envelope that said and my name on it, Victor M. Cedeno. My yeah. I'm Junior. My father's my namesake. So when I saw the envelope, I was like, "Oh, this is mine. What's this?" And I looked at it, and it was a certificate of death. And I fucking read the list of um, oh, shit. the causes of death, and it was uh, pneumonia um, related to HIV and AIDS. And I was like, "What?" The fuck did my dad wow. have AIDS for? Like, what? And I went to my mom, and I was like, this <laughs> I went to my mom, and I was like, wow. Mom, why are you lying to me? You know, I was like, I didn't know my dad uh, died of AIDS. And she was like, get the hell out of here. I got to tell you nothing, you know? <laughs> you know, like, that's how my wow. mom would react to shit. Oh, fuck, wow. that was the joke. That, like, you can't ask. That's the Kill Tony no, joke? No, no, that's the fucking shit. I was, I was wondering, I had this tag that I was going to fucking... Uh, came out? And I, f- I couldn't remember it. I was like, this is this is the uh, a very uh, bad habit to have, is to think of bits and not write them down. Oh, yeah. you think you're gonna remember them later. Yeah. Um, this was um me talking about um, fuck, don't lose it, don't lose it. What was I just talking about? You were saying about finding the death certificate. The death certificate, right? Oh, so um, because like my mo- my mom Your reacted mom? like yes. that. Yeah, that yeah. made me laugh because that's how my mom reacted to stressful situations was with violence. <laughs> <laughs> so, so 
No, my like my mom. Like you can't ask her questions. Did you ever? <laughs> you know, like you know, like kids have kids have fucked up questions. This is the bit that I was thinking of, because kids have fucked up questions. Yeah. So my daughter's like the questions I get now is like my daughter's asking me like that. What does gay mean? Mm-hmm. You know, and I gotta fucking deal with that. And I yeah. think about how I have to navigate this with her. I can't do it like how my mom yeah. did it when I asked her tough questions. You can't whack over the head. Because I'll, get never, out of here. I'll never forget walking home from school. David Traxler yelled out hey Vic's going home to masturbate and I didn't know what masturbate was <laughs> so when I got home from school I said hey mom what does masturbate mean my mom's like get the fuck out of my face <laughs> just always dealt with tough fucking things with fucking violence oh my god um, can't ask questions see I have to fucking write the can't ask questions um, what is masturbate See now I know what this means. What is masturbate? What is gay? You're gonna talk about the dog collar? Is gay. Well, this dog collar, that's a Diablo radio deal. Oh. Diablo radio. Pedro gets so mad anytime somebody tries to bring props <laughs> to, to the fucking podcast. Like somebody will bring a guest, will bring a prop, and then immediately fucking uh snobby <laughs> Jesse and fucking angry Pedro fucking get mad and like, why are you bringing props here, bro? We're just talking. <laughs> I don't remember who. Uh, I think Bobby Tamburo. Angry, angry Pedro is one of the best. Pedro, oh my god, you had to see him at um uh the last podcast on Saturday because it was it became a disaster. Why? Uh, Because um we just were all fucking Hmm. high and drunk and we all just started talking all over each other like Barry Ribs was here. Oh yeah, right. And um, he was talking over Vishnu's entire set in in the hallway at his flip phone. So so the like so yeah so Cassidy, uh, Vraf. Vishnu, Barry, Pedro, and Vinny. And like we would like be in the middle of a talking about something and they would just break off into a side conversation. <laughs> right. And then like <laughs> and fucking and every time it happened, I would look and Pedro would be like, <laughs> Oh no. He <laughs> right? So he kept getting angry. And then uh Vishnu asked we were talking about something and I started telling Vishnu something. And like mid sentence, like I'm in the middle of this point, and Vinny goes, Hey man, is your eye all right? <laughs> hey man, is your eye all right? But he leans completely over. He's like, you, want me to get, you want me to get something for your eye? And then we're all just like, uh, Pedro's like, what the fuck is wrong? Right? He finally snaps and goes, what the fuck is wrong with all of you? Have any of you ever been on a fucking podcast before? <laughs> And just starts yelling. You fucking told Barry that I forgot what he told Barry that he's gonna put his hand up his ass and use him like a puppet or some shit like that. I love when Pedro loses it. Yeah, and then then later on, Pedro looks at Barry. He's like, you know, I'm just kidding, right? Like this is my (laughs) shtick. I love when Pedro loses it. It's my favorite thing. Oh my god! I was like, he's like, this is your fucking podcast. Why don't you fucking do something about it? (laughs) You just let people have conversations. Yeah, we're just fucking. I'm like, I don't know. I'm fucking annihilated, and I just could not guide and it was that and was then a, pedro i mean uh vishnu went off on a fucking on a fucking tangent uh, it was fucking pretty good nice um of uh i got video too of it i have video and audio awesome that was the uh, last friday yeah, yeah, yeah. after the show friday, that's after, great oh, it was friday not saturday friday that's great man yeah so we had a good time this saturday's um we're gonna do the fight companion for the boxing gervonta davis um is boxing somebody aggressively fighting down there yeah i don't know what's going on right now and then uh <clears throat> so we're gonna do a fight companion for that nice which is gonna be fucking fun you friends the, this saturday bring the fire stick yeah hell Tank yeah davis and uh and uh hell yeah. ryan garcia oh shit okay. that's gonna be a real good one yeah yeah that is a that's a um and uh what else we got? It's Thursday, we got cold punch comedy competition mm-hmm. we got a nice fucking week i didn't know there was friday and saturday shows so Friday is the uh uh is Braff and and Franco's free show. Wednesday, oh no no, but Wednesday's Bra- uh Franco's. We had a full week except for Tuesday. We've had oh, a whole yeah. week of comedy here. Yeah this yeah, week. yeah 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. right. Wednesday is Wednesday is tag team. Thursday is four twenty. Four twenty. Like a fucking um, crazy kind of show. I don't even know what's going yeah. on. Elazar's doing this year. Friday's Braff and Danger and, and Franco. Yep. And Danger and then Saturday's uh, Danny. Mm-hmm. And TJ will be coming back. Fucking TJ. I think he's in Tennessee. Yeah. So we got a full week of the dojo. That's for sure. Full week of the dojo. All right. Let's get out of here.
Vic, thank you for having me, man. Thank you, bro. I have always have fun talking this shit out with you. It, you know what? Like the way you came in worked out perfect too, because we didn't get a chance to talk before. Yes. We hopped down so we could. We always have like these great conversations yeah. before the <laughs> podcast. So now we'll just isolate ourselves from each other until we talk, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we could get on it. Um. Uh. Yeah. Real quick, running through these because I haven't been doing them. On the sponsor sponsor board the sponsor board 18 pool tables you know who it is 18 moving oh my god 18 (laughs) i'm like fucking my own shit up all right 18 pool tables njmypooltableservice.com if you're moving a pool table hire professionals because you're gonna mess it up on your own uh 18 pool tables are the best pool table movers in the new jersey and entire tri-state area it says so on their website pool table service pool table moving service pool table repair pool table disassemble you need to put it in your garage for a little while while you do the floor call them up they'll go take it apart and come back and put it together again when you need them to if you need the felt fix that's the best time to do it because you'll save a buck Uh, they are certified dealers of championship cloth so you can get the good stuff all right njnypooltableservice.com 18 pool tables tell them Vic sent you and of course we've got empire sewer and water empire sewer and water nj.com commercial and residential services so that they can fix your shit literally all right you might be dropping big deuces because that chipotle is good and you stack it up and next thing you know your pipes burst and who are you going to call you got to call empire sewer and water new jersey because they know what they're doing they're on call 24 hours a day 365 days a year so just go to the website empire sewer and water nj.com and tell them vic sent you and of course we got combat fitness club 186 main street ridgefield park new jersey it's a full boxing studio so you can get your boxing and fitness on it's a personal training facility all right run by professional boxer dane guerrero combat fitness club you can go follow them on instagram combat underscore fitness underscore club they got monthly personal training sessions and small group sessions stop getting picked on last time you got slapped over a parking space don't let that shit happen again call dane guerrero at combat fitness club and get your shit together all right that's it mike romanelli thank you very much for coming through vic is funny dot com uh at michael romanelli jr on instagram don't fucking message him though he doesn't want to talk to you and uh dojo of comedy east uh that's it i love you people Mm -hmm. you're listening to my dad of the v-cast